Morning, Mikel. Morning. I just want to start by asking an update on Bukayo Saka. How's he after the game on Sunday? Yeah, he's fine. Uh, obviously, we haven't trained, just recovered. Uh, would have um, a short, light session today to prepare the game. Um, and we'll see whether he's um, in the best condition to start or not. The fact you've got eight games coming up in April and another game on the weekend, is this an opportunity to potentially give him a little bit more time to recover tomorrow? We're just thinking about Luton, prepare the game the best possible way and um, and then the right to beat them. Gabo Martinelli coming back, yeah. is he in the frame, is he in the right condition to play a full 90 minutes? He is because uh, he was available to play against uh, a really tough opponent three days ago, so he certainly is today. Again, we will train today and see the state of every player and, and make the right decision tomorrow. Get into this stage of the season, so many games coming thick and fast. Is this a time where you need all your squad available if you are to be successful? Yeah, we have discussed that uh, and pushing for each other and, uh, and available to contribute in, in any way uh, to help us win the game and perform um, consistently the level that we need to and, uh, and we're going to need everybody. Yeah. Is that something as a coach you've got to work with those players who maybe haven't seen as much game time recently to keep them motivated, to keep them on the edge and ready mm. to perform when needed, particularly at this stage of the season? Yeah, that's certainly something really important. They, they really need to feel it and uh, the best way to feel it is to play minutes when they don't have that capacity to show what they are doing. They have to show it in, in training. We have to be close to them and we have to convince them to, to keep doing it um, to earn the right to play. On Sunday we saw maybe a different style of Arsenal performing, but having that different way of playing in order to get a result, is that just showing the evolution of this squad? You have to, um, sometimes because you want to adapt, sometimes because you have to adapt. and. Uh, and you have to have that resilient and and leave your ego aside and your ideology aside and, and do what you have to do to, to win the game. And I thought the team was mentally really strong and um, and uh, and really clever the way they did it. We talk about the strength mentally the players have got. I think William Saliba and Martin Odegaard spoke after the game said they weren't satisfied with just the point. What have you done as a coach to change that mentality and push that mentality in these players to never be satisfied with a point at Manchester City, a, a place where it's been a bit of a struggle in recent years? Oh, because you prepare the game to win it and, and, and when you feel that, that uh, you have what it takes to go there and, and win and, um, and you want to do it and you don't, you're not satisfied, but at the same time you have to understand um, how you're growing as a team. and. Um, and be smart enough as well in certain moments to, to accept something else. And finally for Luton next, uh, have you got good memories of that game in December, uh, 97th minute winner? Especially how tough it was to win, uh, how difficult they have made it for every team. Um, big compliments to, to Rob, the coaching staff and what they have done as a club is a, an amazing journey. I think they deserve more credit than any other team in this league how they've done it, what they transmit as a team and what they generate it and, and it's going to be a really tough match tomorrow. Because Rob, Rob said after that game, he said if it was him in that position, he'd have been crowd surfing. Yeah, it was really emotional and, and the way we celebrated it tells you the difficulty of the match and how much we had to, to fight to end the point. So, so we know what we're facing tomorrow. Thanks, Mikel. Thank you. Hi, Mikel. Hi. There was a lot of praise for William Saliba after the game on Sunday, Gabriel as well. When did you first see them as a duo that can work on the long term for Arsenal? When I decided uh, with, with Edu and the club to send Willy to Marseille. On that moment. Could you <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Uh, you, just, you, you just feel it uh, when you see the partnership and sometimes there is that chemistry between two players that uh, they complement each other, they are so happy to work with each other, to work for each other and, and it just flows, you know, and, and that happens and uh, I think they really enjoy playing together and, and again, they've been really, really, really good. You go from playing Manchester City to playing a team that's fighting to stay in the Premier League, how different do you approach these two games? Well, we're going to be uh, needing even more. It's, it's after two and a half days. Um, they are in a really good moment. Uh, when you see the games that they have played, when they haven't won, it's, uh, they've been really, really tough. And, uh, and that's the games. You know, we have some extraordinary results against um, the other two teams that are 
at the moment uh, leading the table and we are not top so that that means that we have missed certain points somewhere else and uh, and that's where we have to put the emphasis now tomorrow you're approaching probably one of the most crucial periods of the season how do you see that is it a challenge are you, are you worried are you confident I'm really excited, but uh, we have these discussions. When we played Liverpool, I remember at home months ago, it's a, it's a must win or not lose because if not, the title is over. That was two months ago, you know, so it, it's it's always like that. Uh, when you look back in October and you feel the necessity to win and, and be there and, uh, and it's not going to change from now to the end. Obviously, the end is coming. Nine games is still a lot and and just embrace the moment, go game by game and, and make sure we fully prepare for tomorrow to perform well. Thank you, Mikael. Thank you. Hi, Mikael. How are you? Hi, good. Um, last season, it was the narrative was that Arsenal didn't win the league because William Saliba was injured and missed the running. Yeah. How important this season then is it that you do keep all your players, including Saliba, fit? I didn't know about that narrative. So, what is the narrative this season? So, Saliba is fit. So, what's going to happen? You tell me. I don't know. It has to be a narrative, no? So, <laughs> the narrative when he doesn't play, it has to be a narrative when he does play. Well, when he does play, you win the title. How's that? OK, let's take that one. OK, let's move on. But it is important to keep everyone fit, right? <laughs> for sure. And obviously, he's a, he's a massive player for us. And, and you see the impact he has in the team. And uh, we need everybody. And we need everybody at their best. Luton tomorrow, then game of the weekend, and Bayern Munich. I mean, you're still going on two fronts to win the trophies. Just explain to us how, since you've taken over, you've arrived at this point whereby in the top competition in Europe and the top competition in this country, you're well in with the fight with a month ago. Well, this is where we want to be and uh, and now we want to take this opportunity and, and make it happen. And uh, we worked um, every single day with, with that enthusiasm and, and passion to, to make it happen and, um, and I'm enjoying the moment as well. I see the team really flowing and they are really excited about playing each game and that's but that one has to be drived um, now this this journey to the end. The team is enjoying the moment. What about the manager? Yeah, I am as well. <laughs> I'm very excited. I'm full of energy and it's the most beautiful part of the season. More excited than when you were as a player? It is different and and here I haven't been in this position when I was a, a player. Um, but uh, I think it's, it is different. And finally, obviously, we, we always say it's a marathon, not a sprint for the Premier League. But Jurgen Klopp at the weekend said with nine, nine, eight, nine games to go, it's now a sprint to the finishing line. Do you realistically think Arsenal have to win every single game to win the title? I don't know, but it's going to have to be really close to that. Uh, when you see the level and the consistency of, of the other teams and, and historically what is needed to win in this league, um, it's not going to be very far from that. Thank you. Thank you. Hi Miguel, just on the discussion around the squad and how you use it, um, you mentioned obviously players have to earn the right to play in training, but I was wondering with, I guess, the players who aren't starting, does it matter in terms of the amount of minutes they get off the bench if they haven't really got that kind of rhythm in games? Yeah, it's always that balance, you know, and uh, when, then when you play and you haven't played, yeah, but it's my first game, but uh, our obligation and our duty is to be prepared to play any minutes in any moment. And uh, and you see a lot of moments that are an example of risk. When you look at risk moments, best moments for Arsenal, it is a moment that he played a few minutes and he made a huge impact and it was the best days of his life as an Arsenal player. Nobody remembers if he started or he was off the bench. And a lot of examples are like this in world football, in the history of this sport, when a lot of players made the impact in the particular... Sometimes you just need a second to change the history of a football club. You just need 100 minutes to play football. Is that easy to explain to players? Or? Uh, it's easy to see that it's a fact, that it's not something that uh, I'm inventing. And um, in terms of yourself, do you... when? I guess the demands are every three days in terms of games. How long term do you allow yourself to think? Yeah, you have to have an overall picture of what is coming certainly and, and manage the load, uh, what we're going to be able to, to train, how long we're going to have to prepare games. And then obviously the historic and the, and the period, the congested period of each individual and, and how we can still perform at the best possible way, what are the best uh, relationships um, and a lot of factors that the, the team needs in order to perform to try to make the right decision. James, yes, Hi. Hi. 
been a while since I've asked you this. Can I ask you sorry, about sorry? can I ask you about the five phase plan? Okay. I have an article. Can we talk? Sure. When was yeah. the last time? Yeah. I think it was about four or five months ago. Okay. Can, I mean, are you in phase four now? <laughs> <laughs> Let me go back to the computer. Uh, we know far, I think. Getting close to that. So you are still in phase three. But then you're gonna start to phase one again. So once you get to certain points, you go to phase one again, and you want to build it because you you have to be better and you have to continue to evolve. Okay, then can you explain phase one no, and phase no, no, two? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> can you explain? Maybe you one day we have a coffee and, and I tell you how right. it works. So all right, well, let me ask you a different way then. Broadly speaking, are you on track? Do you feel you're on track overall? Yeah, we certainly are because um, you feel a lot of things around the club and. and and uh, it's not only the first team, but I think we are on track as a club. What the women um, did at the weekend, it made us so proud. And it's so important as well, because we really are encouraging and, and embracing um, them to have the space that they fully deserve and they're doing incredibly well. And the same with the academy and the same with our supporters, the unity we have as a club, uh, when we want to um, project from that sense. So it's a lot of good things happening, uh, but we want and we need to aim for much more than that. And can I just ask one about Jurian Timber? Yeah. How is his recovery going? He's doing very well. Um, he's back training. Um, he's not far off. The thing is that last step, he hasn't played any minutes, you know, so does he need, again, with under 23, he doesn't need two games, you know, and we have to, gonna have to feel it now that it's, he's constantly training with us to see how long t um, that's gonna take him. And that last part, which is tricky and sometimes it takes a while, um, Hopefully as quick as possible. How would you rate his chances of playing again for the first team? I think he's got a good chance to say. I don't know percentage, but I think he's got a good chance and uh, and he's gonna push it uh, as far as he possibly can. Thank you. Hi. 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 I was just wondering for tomorrow's game. Um you had played a really strong team against City obviously, but maybe a bit of rotation tomorrow. Is there a number of changes <coughs> in mind where you think that would be too many, too many changes that would disrupt the the rhythm of the team at such an important stage of the season? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, we're always wondering about that and it's just uh, changing certain personnel in certain moments and then those relationships and how long they have played together or how much time they have spent playing together that, that can affect as well. is related to what they do every single day in training as well. We'll look at all these things and, and try to find the right, the right um, team to win. Do you personally have a preference? Do you prefer maybe just one or two changes to keep things fresh or are you open to the idea of maybe six or seven, depending on, on what's necessary. We have done, historically, we have both, um, and um, they have worked sometimes, sometimes not that that good, but uh, is that in relation to that change, or it would have been the same, it's very difficult to predict.